Ladies and gentlemen, we have one final match in this set between Hamster and Newt. It's on Titanforge. Let's see what happens. Hamster in the bottom left of Titanforge by the Shambler. And we have Hamster in the top left here. Wait, did I say Hamster? Wait, what's going on here? No, this is... Oh, I got confused by Alexander's color being the same as... Oh, man, Benno's in here, too. We had some spectators this time around. All right, Newt in the top left and Hamster in the bottom left. And we have Alexander doing math homework. Thanks, homie. Appreciate it. Hope everybody is having a good time today. More Cosmonarchy continues. And 100% uh, on that particular message. I've never... You know, math has always been one of those really annoying things for me. Because I just... I can't wrap my brain around certain really bizarre, like, odd, like, calculus stuff. I just never learned it when I was young. And uh, it, it kind of is like its own language, if you look at all the symbols and stuff. And... When you have languages, you know, you, you, learning them when you're younger, that does tend to help out a little bit. But uh, obviously something that uh, is funny for Benno is that he's a teacher for high school math, as you can see. So, you know, we, we get a lovely little conversational so aside. We get a little bit of extra flavor to this particular cast, thanks to the <laughs> rounds of... <laughs> thanks to the, the rousing messages from our, our homies here. Uh, and, yeah, we obviously have Hamster and Newt in the players seats and those are important because uh benno may have qualified i haven't checked this yet but uh hamster and newt have already uh had their spots confirmed and their sign up availability and stuff uh taken care of for uh, the invitational b which is coming up at the end of the weekend here we got the fulcrum finishing quarry online this this looks very familiar there wasn't as uh, uh you know ridiculous har harassment happening with the scribe so we didn't see any worker kills or anything like that, but uh, definitely something that was interesting. Now, here's something else interesting, because we had the Legionnaire, and it got canceled. So what is he planning? Okay, now he's going to pop it. Oh, I see what he's doing. So he, he makes that, and he's going to cancel that, presumably, or maybe he is just going to leave it there, especially considering the, uh, the Mason is putting a watchdog down. So uh, this is going to result in a second gate being put down because this will massively delay the Nexus. we got a Vulture heading on down. With the second gate, with the Legionnaire coming... You know, sure, it's a pretty big help. The Legionnaire should just, you know, it could just chase the Mason down forever. But uh, obviously, at this point, the Vultures are going to return home. The scribe continuing to do some scouting and harassment. Vultures will take care of that. And the uh, Watchdog should get canceled. Okay, thank thankfully, Hamster gets his money back. Or Newt gets his money back, rather. And there we go. Now we can have Hamster put down a Nexus. The quarry is finished. So that was a pretty good delay. That was a pretty good delay by Newt. Uh, made sure to stop the flow of Protoss before it could get too crazy. But it does mean that there's a second gate, and now we have the Draken incoming. Uh, so the fact that the Vultures are coming on down now is pretty good. Uh, Hamster will have his Legionnaire kind of like a, a heavily harassed here and probably destroyed by the, the two Vultures. Uh, but the, as soon as the Draken comes out, you know, depending on the damage dealt over here, unfortunately, yeah, that Legionnaire is dead. Like, there's really no hope for it. And he's kind of lured him in. I, I think if he just did some damage there, he would have been in a better, better spot. So this might be some pretty good economic harassment because, you know, Ham Hamster's already going to be behind the worker count, but somehow not a single scribe has been killed. I don't know how that managed to happen. Dropping a mine a little bit more defensively. Here's another one to come in. So sh we should surely see a couple of scribes killed here. Uh, mine being put down over there and Hamster's not reacting. So this is a lot of economic damage. Second Draconin's already popped though. One scribe has been killed. Is that really it? Did he only lose a single scribe? I mean, he lost a lot of mining time, but... He, I can't believe it. I can't believe he lost one scribe during that engagement. But again, the problem is, you know, the treasury is going to have a quarry on it. The, we're going to have the, the two double mining over here and stuff, the double worker production. Sure, you're going to have your nexus up, but we are seeing a pretty heavy worker advantage for Newt here. It's just a question of can he capitalize upon it, right? Because behind this, he's got no military units at all. These Draconids could march across the map and could incur some significant losses. Is sure the Palladium's up, but if that's going to be a phalanx at first... What, like, like, he doesn't even have any money to make a military unit. He made an anchor. With no military, he's making an anchor. So I actually think that this is a really, really good counterattack. And the game is not over yet, right? Like, sure, you've got this economic advantage, but you you spent none of your money on military units to get make to make sure that you were going to pull ahead in workers. You didn't do really hardly any worker damage over here uh, in, in terms of lasting impact. This anchor is going to have to get canceled. And there is the phalanx more than halfway done. But uh, right now... Yeah, we are going to see a canceled quarry. That's uh, some Vespine that's gone. That anchor did not get canceled. March it right up on here, hamster, and see what you can find. Because you are seeing, you know, there's Goliaths in production. There's the one phalanx. You can contest that with three Draconids. One one worker is already down. 
Here comes the 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 pull. We've got four Dracodins now. Should absolutely just dive onto this Phalanx. You can see preemptively going for the Mason repairs, but now the, the Masons themselves are being sniped. Now, the Goliaths are coming out, so this push won't actually end the game, but it's going to result in some worker management here, we can say. Now, can he, can he just attack the Phalanx? Because his Phalanx is already losing a little bit of HP. Just sicking directly onto the Mason line. Oh, attacking his own Dracodin. We, shades of Biddy B. We don't, like, don't want to see that. Come on now. And we want to see Biddy B, but we don't want to see that part. Now, the Scribe has occupied a little bit of time here. Phalanx is down to almost a uh, half HP, but obviously with all the mech units here, it's going to be more than enough. One last worker is killed on the way out, and now Newt is very far behind in the workers. Needs to get his quarry set up on the, the expansion, and needs to go back to actually training workers from his main. So, uh, very, very awkward situation for uh, Newt, the counter damage. You know, being being punished for not being able to, to make that happen. Here's a... a, a Flubbed lift. We love to see that, right? Because that's trying to get the quarry down. Eventually, we want to be able to for you to hold like a keyboard modifier, like shift or, or control or something, and then hit the key for the, um, you know, say like the Z for quarry on grid or, or whatever. I think it's Z for quarry. Uh, anyway, hitting a key for it, and then you get you just immediately place the the add on. That that's ideally what would happen, uh, but we don't have that fun functionality in just yet. But it's a pretty cool uh, interaction or set of interactions back and forth. For now, Phalanx being repaired, Greed punished by Newt after he tried to, you know, punish his opponent with the, the fast vultures. And kind of did, you know, in theory, he killed one worker, he slowed down mining time. But it wasn't anything that was super lasting. And now he's down, you know, to a pretty low number of workers. His, the embassy coming online means that uh, we're going to have three worker production queues. That And that embassy will obviously make a witness first, right? But eventually you'll you'll see the, the scribes be the, the main focus. I think it's all pretty good. I think we're in a in for a pretty good spot here. So happy to see some nice action go down. Nude is going to have to figure out how he can respond to this threat and uh, hold his head up high. Got a vulture screaming on down for scouting. Is it just going to be a game where you have like nonstop worker harassment back and forth? You know, like that 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 could be an option, right? Vulture sneaking into the bottom right just to scout the uh, natural, or the third rather. You can scout it from here. But as it is, this is fine, too. Here comes a Legionnaire just to see what's going on. Now, actually, he, he, this Legionnaire might end up uh, moving forward and, and, and getting that last lobotomy mine. Doesn't look like it. Now taking a third, uh, or planning to, anyway, is Newt. We take a look over here. we got a star pad coming. Witness is going to spot all of this stuff. Great. Lovely. Get plenty of info. Plenty of intel. Now, Hamster already has his anti-drop stuff in order. So, you know, the double Hierophant, the double Dracodin. Definitely going to be efficient for that. And busting this situation without a lot of melee units is really quite difficult. We actually have a synthetic Synod coming, though. So it looks like we're going to see a reproduction of what happened on Axiom, where we had the vassals into the Demiurge. We're going to see the Demiurge part of that again, I believe. Could be Clarions. You know, it's, it's hard to say what exactly is going to come out of that, but... Plenty of scribes, you know, up up by a, a considerable amount of workers so far, and uh, yeah, the Protoss is looking pretty pretty chill. You know, maybe thinking about taking another base. Yep, the bottom right is gonna have a scribe headed over there. Did the witness spot anything else? I'm actually not sure where the witness is. Did it die? Is it dead? Is it out of here? I don't know how it could have died. So it must have. Uh, it must be hiding in plain sight. I'm trying to select to see if I can. Spot it somewhere, but nope. No dice. Anseal coming out first. That will actually reveal the witness if it is somewhere. Obvious. Oh, there it was. Yep, right on top of the Goliaths. Okay. So now that's gone. Uh, and the Trojan coming after that. So, you know, uh, one of the games, like I said, did involve... Uh, it was a game on Omnivore that didn't get it into the cast, but uh, Hamster ended up getting a lot of worker deaths as a result of a phalanx being airlifted around. That's why these anti-drop sort of uh, demonstrations have been put in. Got a capping a geyser. There is a Demiurge. So, yeah, I, it looks like we might see a move out, but wisely keeping some units around here for the purposes of anti-drop. Anseal is going to move around. I think it's on a direct course where the higher fence will tag it, which means it actually could die, but it looks like instead it'll... It, it's being micromanaged. Oh, never mind. Not quite. And unfortunately for, uh, for Newt, he's... Uh, yeah, he's not going to be able to do too much there, so... It looks like the on-hit effect got absorbed by the Anseal Shield, which is why the Hierophant didn't actually slow it there until the end. It's an interesting mechanic. So you can keep that in mind with the uh, with the way that the Anseal works. 
more and more vultures being added. That, that's going to do pretty well as meat. But again, we don't. We have one zealot. Like, there's not much of a front line over here. And so it does feel like the Demiurges are not going to be able to be too efficient, you know? Um, they can contend with the, the Goliaths, technically, but there's no witness. Okay, here we go. The Phalanx drop is coming in. It's already killed a lot of scribes, apparently. Although, so I think some of those kills, because this is like the first Phalanx, some of those kills were not actually relevant, right? So it's killed four scribes so far. Where is the reaction? It looks like the anti-drop force was uh, brought in with this, this area. Yeah, it was kind of like brought up together. So here's the Demiurge. Turn, turns around and uh, starts to harass the, the the phalanx. Getting a lot of kills, like 26 frags. Now, that most of those were actually workers at the end of the day, right? We do see a very different number of workers. Now, here comes the attack force in re reaction, though. There's three phalanxes set up. The goliaths on the high ground are absolutely going to be a pretty efficient source of, uh, of power here. And the Demiurge is not able to, you know, collapse in and, and actually do some damage onto these units. But when you're facing phalanxes, great opportunity for you to use some beefy units. Golems, Amaranths, anything that can get into melee range is going to be very, very helpful. And if Amaranths get on top of units, well, they, they're going to sustain with their shields. As long as there's no mines to lobotomize them, to, to stun them, it's going to be a pretty big deal there. So we have an Atlas coming online for our Terran player. I'm not sure where he's building it. Maybe in this third? Yeah, it's sort of in this like in-between area. We do have a, a Trojan returning home, wounded. Another uh, Trojan dispatching with a, a Phalanx. Never resumed uh, harvesting minerals in the main. He's going to have to correct for that. Yeah, there we go. Making sure to, to set himself back up. He has a Demiurge sort of laying out, out here latent. I like the Demiurge in the back. I mean, it's a very expensive unit, but you're not really able to make a siege happen right now until you add more melee. So the Demiurge alone is going to be really efficient for this. In fact, he could just still stand it over here and uh, and attack from the high ground, but the gateway units are going to be dispatched to maybe deal with this. It looks like the Trojan's actually just going to get out of there. Witness spotting over here, but is going to be sniped out by the ant seal detection. So a little bit uh, clumsy of its usage. Anchor never got repaired, but not really a big deal, I suppose. Adding more and more fulcrums. So it's interesting. He made the Atlas. Uh, it's not done yet, but uh, he's, he's adding more tier one production. So supposedly uh, going to in, sort of enhance what he's already got. Maybe that's the play. And the Demiurge is going to finish off the job on the anchor. Not a bad shout there. Now he can fall back. By the way, if you mind control something, or if you if you tyranny or dominate something that's inside, like a transport, you also get the cargo. So that's something else to, to point out. Looks like Hamster's going to tuck tail and, and, and fall away. He obviously was setting up a fourth base. He's guarding it versus the drops. Yes, he did get put down quite a bit in terms of the worker count and in terms of tempo by the phalanx drop. But, you know, with the base count being higher, he can and will saturate his gases better. He's got the capped gas in the natural, but not the main and not the third. So this might be something that he thinks about doing later on. Uh, obviously, there's no Hierophant here to, to sort of force a catch. And unfortunately, there's no static defense and no units over here. I guess the Draconids will pop up pretty soon. He's actually going to send the Scribes after the, the Phalanx, but that's not really ideal, right? It's actually full HP now anyway, so. Uh, here comes the Draconids. Obviously, loading up the Trojan in this situation is a really bad idea, so he unloads it very quickly to try to repair that. Uh, obviously, you don't want to bring all your units back in this situation, but... Since this has been giving so many disproportionate rewards for Hamster... Uh, it's definitely something, or sorry, for Newt, it's definitely something Hamster should be guarding against a little bit better. He is capping another geyser. Looks like that's the one in the main. So that's always worth keeping tabs on. Uh, another thing is that we did recently add in a delay to the, uh, a slight delay for units that are unloading from a transport before they can follow any other orders. Uh, the, the transport unload thing got a little bit faster when we removed the order delay. So it is a little bit better in the immediate patch, uh, but in the modern patch that you can play on pre-release, uh, we've already put a delay onto that. So this is gonna be a pretty big fight and leading in the charge are the Demiurges. You don't want to engage them sort of like without your the most of your army, right? And some of these mines already being popped here. Uh, one of them will connect onto the, the Zealot. Eventually it will die. Here's a witness to detect the remaining one. Not so many of them have been used. I, I notice a lot of players don't actually place a lot of their mines. At least in, in Newt is the, the predominant Terran that we see. Uh, the most prolific Terran player that we see right now. Shambler being someone who switched over to Terran more recently. Double Embassy, so that's interesting. I wonder what that's going to be for. Just massing out scribes, perhaps. Adding more Demiurges, more Dracodins to the production tab there. But uh, for the most part, at this point, we need to see more Zealots, I think. That's that's really the limiting factor here. Again, you do you do so much self-splash damage, but even still, yeah, some Zealots now screaming in. That's going to help melt the Goliaths. 
And uh, yeah, only two phalanxes in, in actually deployed right now. Uh, that one is going to start uh, falling away, but it's just going to get sniped down anyway. And so, yeah, honestly, the, the critical mass of five Demiurges in this situation, proving really, really hard for Newt to deal with, he is going to need to take a more entrenched position and fall away from the cliff, because that is going to give a significant advantage here. Now, Newt has taken the, the sort of, I guess you could call it like the two o'clock base. This is a, a pr more prolonged skirmish. One of the Demiurges has been focused down. I do think that in this situation, again, you can see the difference in efficacy. The Goliaths can stand tall a lot longer without the, the self-splash from the Phalanxes. And so there was like one or two Zealots that weren't even in the actual fight. They, they were reinforcements. When you thin the herd versus the Zealots, you start to become much better off. And so I think that's in a pretty good spot in that respect. We got Double Sentinel coming up online here. This is going to look very familiar to that Benno game, actually. Maybe there won't be any mass vassals, but we do actually have artisans coming. That's our, that's what the uh, embassies were for, it looks like. Try to grab the, the gas mining over here, presumably. Here's a, a random mason. Also a random demiurge, I actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> I feel like the, yeah, the rest of the army moved back over here and these units were just sort of part of a rally or something. So uh, yeah, there goes two zealots getting bopped by the vulture mines. And the fourth base is revealed here for Hamster to know. Uh, Clarions were on the way as well as another synthetic sign on a couple of Arden authorities for analogs. So yeah, it looks like Hamster is gonna go the high tech route of countering the phalanxes by making them, <coughs> excuse me, making them shoot themselves using the, uh, the analog. Always a big fan. We don't get to see that unit very often. All right. Dispatching the artisans towards the mid right of the map. Take advantage of those. This is a pretty difficult situation for either player to be particularly efficient in, I feel like, because the phalanxes can just fight back, but the rest of the units can't, right? So you're getting a lot of like random free units just uh, being attacked, and then you're, you know, it's very chaotic, right? So, you know, trying to fight around this, it's, it's proving a little bit harder than maybe you would expect. Shambler's actually talked about making this like a giant ramp, like the whole thing a ramp. So we'll see if that ends up happening, because that could obviously change the, the complexion of the game a lot. And maybe make it more um, more possible for melee units to find better effect efficiency or something like that. But nonetheless, Phalanxes are in a pretty good spot to shell. This Demiurge is going down, almost certainly, yeah. Yeah, there it goes. That was a pretty brutal volley. And so this is what I mean, right? It's like, you definitely need the melee to retaliate, but instead, Hamster's going for analogs. You can see it right there. He's making two of them at a time. He's actually adding rogue galleries, probably for the bar guest support unit or something. Goliath getting patched up by the clerics. We got an anchor set up over here on the right side with some vult uh, vulture mines, but uh, ironically, no, nothing in that anchor, so it's kind of minor. That wounded Goliath did not last very long. Another engagement has to fall back because those zealots are going to mean a big bomb when these uh, phalanxes deploy. Yeah, the first round kind of goes awry. Could be using vultures maybe as a, a cheaper alternative to the, the goliaths, specifically for absorbing the, the melee. Oh no, that could have just been attack moved by the goliaths that was like one hit away from dying. Ends up costing him a tank. Cancels that stockade. Yeah, what's he been using his tier 2 for? That's what I want to know. This whole time, okay, he's adding a captaincy now. A couple of captaincies. But yeah, this whole time he's had he's had tier two, and the only thing he's used for, used it for is the sentinels. That feels like a little bit of a miss by hamster has a pretty big float now, saturating his uh, for, his fifth base now, right? And uh, obviously has the gas income thanks to these artisans in the middle. He could be uh, he's got two of them in each gas. Uh, he could obviously have more, you know, but it looks like that was enough for him. Adding it more and more scribes in the rallies, got witnesses all over the place, but not using them. Okay, we have an analog, right? And we have some clarions. We need to sync them up. Because versus phalanxes, they can be very efficient. You can see here, lobbing back the uh, the projectiles right back at them. Gotta watch out. A couple of them will pop. Oh no, there's a random... <laughs> Just charges the front line with an analog. That's a very expensive unit to lose like that. But you know what? It did the job. And again, now we need to see those things like madcaps. We need to see something, some sort of meat in this army that can you know, respond to this. But drain the, the energy without uh, taking so much damage back. Uh, especially in the splash respect. So the honestly, the analog's proving really efficient versus the phalanx ball. Definitely something that you got to start thinking about. Mass Goliath, you know, that, that'll do it if you can get enough of them. Yeah, we do see a bunch of bad caps trying to keep the money low. Actually, you know what? Nude has done a very remarkable job of keeping his mineral count low. His gas count is actually where he's uh, getting too much. And look at this little cheek. Look at this cheek right here. 
I can't believe it. I can't believe what Hamster's done. He's just mining it from a, from a distance with the scribe and the artisan. And it's like right in the neighborhood of, <laughs> I don't know what the pylon's for. That's pretty funny. I think Hamster had a plan for that and maybe forgot about it. So now his plan, of course, is to use the, the phalanx mortars against themselves and lob those shots back at it. Obviously, the, this is a little funny. You could send the Goliaths down there or something. Anseal's trying to their best to protect each other. Oh, no, the Draconid's coming up the wrong side. That's going to hurt a little bit. Oh, my God, the analogs. Dude, catch. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need to rethink this a little bit here if you're new in Newt's shoes. He's like, what the hell? How do I fight against this Clarion analog combo? Yeah, he's, he's not. Yeah, I don't think he's even seen the analog before. So we have uh, <laughs> yeah, Protoss Volt VS, you know, Artosis Shades, and so the Clarion goes down. That's gonna be the big deal. And uh, we have the the final collapse. I think this might be the, the dying sort of dregs of this game because uh, Newt is Newt, Newt is, <laughs> Newt is uh, entering the shambler zone of typing and that is GG. Well, not really GG. I say GG, but I I mean BG, you know, that, that meme. Well, there you go. Newt, uh, Newt has indeed fallen. He still took the whole set, remember. Uh, and, and so we will update the score in favor of Hamster here. But uh, some some nice tech options, some nice stuff, dis uh, you know, on display there. I really liked to see how uh, the Clarion analog combo moved in. Uh, very cool, very cool stuff. So if you think it was very cool, make sure that you post in the comments below saying very cool. And uh, remember that uh, tanks are useless, even though he was winning pretty hard with them up until the point where you know, the, the tier four stuff came out. <laughs> See you guys in the next video.